Hi guys, here's a quick introduction how you can use the plugin and for what you have to pay attention for. First of all, you have to install it of course, and if you bought the plugin, then you get two files. The first one is the blend file that the plugin needs to work correctly, and the second is the plugin itself. And then back to Blender, under the add-ons tab, just click on install, go to the right path, and then just install the add-on and activate it. And then under the add-on preferences, it's important that you set here the right path to the blend file. And now you are ready. Um, so basically it's very simple. For the shading effects, we have the dust area, the dirt area and the formations area. And now you can say for every area if the effect should be only added to specific objects or all objects. So for example, I can just select a chair and click on add selected and then the dust effect is only added to the chair. And I can also undo it by clicking on delete selected. And if I click on add all, it adds the dust effect to all objects it can find in the scene and that uses a principal BSDF in the material. But it can also convert glass BSDFs to comparable principal BSDFs with just a single click, but I will show that to you later. And what is very cool that you can always see how much materials are currently affected by this specific effect. To show you it better, I can just go into the shader editor. And then as you can see, we have the dust effect automatically added to the current material and also to all the other materials in the scene with just a simple click. And we can also add the dirt effect and the deformations effect now. And everything is connected the right way to your existing material without doing anything manually. So if I click on the different objects, as you can see, it's added everywhere. Now we can play a bit with the settings. Um, so for the dust effect, you can control the dust amount, the dust scale, the dust top ratio. So basically you can have dust only on top of the objects if you want. Or you can also say that you want to have dust everywhere. And then we have the dust viewing angle and consistency. So what does that mean? In the real world, you see dust mostly at a low angle. So basically from the side and not so much if you look frontal. And you can simulate that with this slider. So um, to show you it better, I set it to one. And if I then go up, as you can see, the dust will be less uh, visible. And then if I go down, you can see it better. Then let's go to the dirt area. And here you can control the general dirt amount with this slider. Or the edge dirt amount with this slider. Um, so basically, um, it's additional dirt only on the edges of the objects. Um, but keep in mind, this only works with cycles for now, because Eevee has some limitations with this effect. But it will also probably work with Eevee next, so I'm working on it. With the uh, dirt scale, you can control the general scale of the dirt. So it affects the general dirt and edge dirt. Like this. And with the edge dirt spread, you can control how much the edge dirt should spread from the edge. So for example, if I set it to 0.01, then as you can see, we only have a very small edge dirt. And then we also have the deformations area. And here with the deformations amount slider, you can control the overall deformations amount. So this affects the scratches and bumps. For example, if I make it stronger, then both effects will be stronger or weaker. Uh, with the deformation scale, you can control the scaling of the deformations. 
and here you can also control the scratches and bumps individually so I can set it to one and also set the bumps to one but yeah this would be a bit much in this case and you can animate every parameter so for example I can set it to zero set a keyframe then I go to 100 set it to one set a keyframe again and then as you can see the deformations are slowly coming and then if you have set up everything you can make single objects unique to control their parameters individually so for example i select a chair and then i press on the make unique button you can select as many objects you want and then as you can see the drivers uh, of this area are deleted. So I can uh, control uh, here the dirt amount, for example, and this only affects this material. So you can have full control over every material and adjust it to your liking. But what are we doing with glass? For example, this lamp here. We have a glass BSDF instead of a principled BSDF. So if you have a glass shader with a principled BSDF as the base, then yeah, it's no problem and everything works normal. But if you have a glass BSDF instead, then you have here the option to change the glass BSDF with a comparable principled BSDF. So what do I mean with that? Um, here I click on selected because I only want to change it on this object and then it's automatically exchanged with a principled BSDF and it also takes over all connections and values like the base color or IOR value. And the transmission is set to one so it's quite near to a glass BSDF. And then you can just click on add selected or add all. And as you can see, we have all the effects also on our glass now. And at the top, you also have a quick fix area, which can be very helpful if the scaling of the deformations don't really look right on some objects. Basically, this problem can occur if you haven't applied the scale on some objects. And yeah, sometimes it's a bit annoying to find it out yourself. You could also manually apply the scale on every object you want, but with this button you have the ability that the scaling is only applied to objects which are having a dust, dirt or deformations effect applied. So in this case I click on apply scale and here I especially prepared the scene because sometimes if you apply the scale you get this error message. Maybe you already know it and this is when you have two or more objects that are sharing the same object data. Um, so basically that's here under data. As you can see, we have two objects that are using the same data. And with this button, you can make a single user data for every object. So we press this button first and then we click on apply scale again. And yeah, then everything should fit. And the cool thing is only the objects are affected which have the effect on it. Now let's add some cobwebs and for that you just have to click on the add button. And then under the modifiers tab you will find the new cobweb generator. And first of all you have to say uh, which objects should be affected by the cobweb generator. Basically that means to which objects can the cobwebs be connected to. In my case I want everything so I choose the role Attic Collection. And then the plugin also did all the rest for you. So you are automatically in edit mode, the right pencil is selected with the right settings. And you can just draw lines wherever you want. And then as you can see, we already have our first cobwebs here or you can yeah, make cobwebs wherever you want. Um, if the distance um, is too small, it also connects to other objects and um, you can control it here um, if you want or here you can also make everything more connected. Um, yeah, 
Then we have some other settings like the coverage and with that you can control the density per meter. Um, so if you make this uh, number smaller, then you can have more wires in the same space. So basically the distance between the wires can be smaller and because of that you have more wires. Here you also have a fine tuning for the density and yeah, here I set the width so you can make everything wider if you want. Uh, you can also control the hanging like this. And then the contact points you normally don't have to touch. The only thing is if you have very large scale objects. So if we talk about hundreds of meters, then I would make the contact points uh, smaller because otherwise it can be quite challenging for the PC. The thing is for the generation, it projects points on every object to which the cobwebs can be connected to. And if you set the contact points density too high for very large scale objects, then this can be quite challenging for your PC. Uh, normally 100 is okay, but yeah, you can also make this lower. And then of course you can also change the radius of the cobwebs. And if you want, you can also change the translucency here with this slider. If you want to make large scenes full of cobwebs, then I recommend to split it so that not all cobwebs have to be activated all the time to save some RAM. And you can do that by just duplicating the uh, cobweb generator. And here you can also make this one unique if you want. And then you also have the ability to set other parameters for the second cobweb generator. Um, you can also choose another collection here. Um, we already have drawn some lines, so we can yeah, first delete everything. And then we go back to our pencil and then we can draw another lines. And if I now go back into uh, object mode, um, yeah, as you can see, this is the first cobweb generator and this the second. And so you can only activate the ones you need for the current frame. Now it's time to add some fog and for that you can just click on the add button and change the density a bit. And then as you can see, we already have our fog. And the cool thing is the domain size of the fog automatically adjusts to the scene dimensions. So you already have quite a good start at the beginning and don't have to adjust it too much. And yeah, then you can play a bit with the values like this. And now let's add some dust particles. So you just have to click on this add button and then as you can see, we already have them. Um, the dust particles are independent from the fog because if you have a very large fog domain size, then you normally don't want everywhere dust particles and um, because that can be quite uh, too much compute intense. If you add them, the position of the particles domain is automatically the same as the position of the active camera. And if you don't have a um, camera in the scene, it takes the zero location. Normally, the domain size is big enough for most cases. So if I zoom out here, then as you can see, it's still way bigger than the fog domain. Um, but if you want, you can control the domain size here. Um, the only thing is you can't set it too low. So I wouldn't go under 5 because then you can get um, calculation problems for the particles. Um, if you still want to make it smaller, then you can also just um, scale it manually by pressing S and then 0.5 for example. Um, then you only have to crank the particle scale up a bit like this and of course you can make it as big as you want so here for example the x-axis the y-axis and the z-axis 
In solid mode we can play a bit with the other settings, so I just press play and as you can see it already looks quite good from the movement, so you don't really have to touch anything if you just want normal dust particles. But if you want you have some very cool settings here, for example you can simulate wind, um, here I can set it to 0.1 and then as you can see uh, all the particles are going into the Z direction and of course you can also do it for the other directions like this. And then I set it to zero again and here you can control the particles amount. Uh, here the particle scale I said before. Then the particle speed so you can crank up the speed a bit and the particles rotation that they are rotating more and you can even uh, make our particles um, turbulence here so for example you can set this higher to 10 and yeah then you can even have a turbulence for the particles if you need it you also have the ability to change the particle seed or if you want you can even give the particles an emission um, so for that I can go to the render preview and here I deactivate the light and then just to show you I set it to 1 and yeah then the particles are shining and yeah that's basically it it's just that easy and i really hope that you like the plugin and that it can help you with your work and improve your workflow and if so then i would be very happy if you could leave a good rating on blender market or gumroad yeah so have fun and see you soon